OpenELA was started as a collaboration between SUSE, CIQ, and Oracle in late 2023. Give us a brief overview of OpenELA and what's ahead for this new trade association. So we started late in uh, 2023, and, and I thought we got off to a, well, we did, we got off to a great start, right? We set the, uh, I call it our, our seed planting. We planted great seeds in 2023 with the uh, goal of, of open compatibility, right? So we're looking at compatibility, collaboration, and forward development. So we set the core tenets of the project, we set down the bylaws, the policies, all of this to include full compatibility with this existing standard. So we've, we've set the goals for swift updates, secure uh, fixes, transparency, all the, the automation and tools that we need to make this project work going forward. So we've got those in place. We're, we've got the community started. The intent is to ensure that uh, this open standard remains free and distributable for everybody. Really, the intent of 2024 is to ensure that the long-term future of this open, compatible enterprise standard continues and, and has a good foothold. We set up the source base um, for the code so that uh, all of the enterprise Linux distributions uh, can leverage it and use it and collaborate. And we've done that so that uh, we want to be able to continue to achieve one-to-one -one bug to bug compatibility, right? For all of these versions of enterprise Linux. So we set everything up in Git and we're encouraging community collaboration. We recently launched a second project um, that's covering what's uh, very much needed in this area. And that's the creation of user documentation. Uh, we've got the repository set up, and this documentation exists today, and it covers areas such as managing the core system configuration, setting up system users and authentication, and things like setting up networking. So it's not it's a not a zero byte project. It's existing. We're we're leveraging existing uh, uh, documentation. It's off to a great start. It's a great resource, a resource that many distributions in this space are missing. Right? It just didn't exist. Then we have a third project, um, which we haven't launched yet, but we'll give a little sneak peek here. It involves the uh, Linux 4.14 series. This Linux kernel series was uh, released clear back in 2017. And Greg Corhartman and others were, were maintaining this long-term kernel. But back in January, Greg announced that um, They've, they're ending long-term support for that. But from an enterprise perspective, um, there are still people that, that need that kernel. Businesses continue to rely on those technologies, right? Even the 4.14 series kernels. And so for an enterprise, we need to continue to, to supply that support. So stay tuned. We'll give lots more details on that. But that's something that we're going to be additional thing that we're going to be doing in 2024. As OpenELA continues to build its community and offer this library of code freely to all members, what is OpenELA committing to at this time of disruption in what has historically been considered open source and freely available? As you're saying, it's kind of an interesting time right now because there's a lot of challenges happening with open source in, in terms of not being as open as it, as it was. And it, it's kind of scary to me, but I was reading an article the other day that uh, they were giving estimates that the uh, Linux market's going to reach over 15 trillion by the year 2027. Doesn't surprise me at all, right? It's a huge market. And almost everybody attributes that to the fact that it's open source. And I agree with them, but not as open source as an instance of code but open source as a methodology that enables collaboration and free exchange of ideas. And I think that's the part that we're losing because a lot of people are starting to say, this code base is extremely valuable. Let me grab it, right? And control it and hold it tight. Well, it's the idea of this collaboration. They're, they're, they're losing that. And it's this collaboration that is resulting in coded technology that's freely available. 
So it's this underlying idea of collaboration and it's this notion of consensus. Another word for consensus is standard building, right? And so the continued growth of Linux isn't due to any single code version, right? It's, it's in the continued consistency of the standard that it represents. And we're losing that in some cases. So, but when we don't lose that, this results in many businesses and industry organizations looking to these standards. And the one that we're working on with OpenELA, of course, is the Enterprise Linux standard. And that becomes an infrastructure standard that they depend on. And so our efforts here are to ensure that this standard stays open, we're able to collaborate, and we're able to leverage it for a long period of time. And so OpenELA started as a response to a threat to that standard, and we're trying to ensure that it continues on going forward. Can you also talk about how can people get involved with OpenELA? It's very simple. Uh, uh, you just go out to openela.org. We got a big button on there that says, click here to join. Uh, and what it's going to do is invite you to come to our conversations on Slack. Um, the reason I say that's an interesting question right at the moment is we've actually had a, a couple of, of people come back to us and say, well, I can't use Slack. Um, we picked Slack because we know that a lot of other open source projects are using Slack. So we said, okay, people are used to it. We'll just use that tool. It was nothing special to us. We just picked it because we thought everybody could. So we're finding that there are a few people that can't use Slack. We don't want that to be a barrier. Uh, if you can use Slack, great. We've got all the channels and everything set up. That's where the, the conversations are happening right now. But if you can't, please reach out to us uh, at info at openela.org. It's also listed there on openela.org. Just click on it, send us an email. We'll figure out how we can have uh, begin and having communication with you and and uh, invite you into the community. And that's an invitation not just for individuals, but organizations and companies as well. When we look at OpenELA, who are the constituents who you are looking at? Is it like vendors? Are there Linux you know, players? Are also community members who may be doing different bits? So, so talk about what plans you have from that perspective. Everybody is welcome. Uh, we would like everybody to, to come join us both uh, and freely available to come as individuals or as a, as a company and organization, as I mentioned. And um, there's several different audiences. Um, the, the, the main um, gathering point, I would say, is around this enterprise standard, right? And ensuring that it goes forward. And that standard is... Uh, in, of interest to other distros, right? Those seem like the obvious ones. Um, and we are having a lot of communications with those. But it's also of interest to uh, ISVs, for example, um, because they are building their applications and services based on those standards, right? So it's important for them to have that, that base, uh, solid base, uh, that's well known and continue forever, right? And so it's also of interest to that group. Um, we're finding interest from community members. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the projects around documentation. So it's not just code, it's understanding how to use the systems, how to deploy them. So from that perspective, right, it's of interest to operators and, and end users as well. So there's several different audiences that... Uh, have interest in coming and joining. Last year, we saw some disturbing, you know, movements in the open source world. You have been in this industry for so long. Of course, open ELA is a good kind of response and also community-based response to some of those changes. Are you worried about it? Or you feel that this is a kind of natural progression of open source and the way the community is responding is actually showing how community works. So we should not be worried about it. We've seen this in the past. Right. It's, it's kind of it almost feels like a cycle. I don't want to date myself. I do have my gray hair. Um, so I have been around for a few years um, and I've seen this cycle happen. But I've also seen the response from the community. Right. 
Um, not just local neo aid. There's several projects uh, that have popped up. A couple of them, you know, are in CNCF now, and others uh, as a response. And so the, I think the beauty of our communities are no, we're not going to go quiet. We're not going to go silently, right? Uh, we're going to respond to this and and pull together as an industry community from all the different entities, and we will push on. And so I'm I'm bully about open source and that it will survive these attacks. Ellen, thank you so much for taking time out today and give us an update on Open ELA. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me.